Hello everybody, it's Scott Hansen again from the riffle.blogspot.com. I'm here to do my eighth fly in my Joy of Fly Tying series. Uh, this is a dry fly, it's a thorax done mayfly imitation. Uh, it's a great fly to uh, use if you're not having luck with parachutes or standard dry flies or comparadons, things like that. Just another mayfly imitation to have in your arsenal. Uh, this is size 14. Uh, just your standard dry fly hook. This is a Dairiki 320. I'm going to take the finished fly out there. Put a new hook in the vise. Now with dry flies, I think it's very important to get the proportions correct. So uh, I like to start the thread in certain spots on dry flies just to make sure that um, it's kind of a reference point. So I make sure I Put everything where it's supposed to go. So on this fly I like to start the thread right in the midpoint. So I will just start it right there with a jam knot Oops. and cover up the back half of the fly or of the hook with that thread and bring it back to the midpoint. Trim off my extra thread. For tails on this fly and most of my dry fly or mayfly imitations I like to use some uh, mayfly tails or just a synthetic fiber, kind of like a paintbrush uh, fiber there that uh, makes great tails for mayflies. I'll take, oh, for size 14, I'll take mm, 6 to 8 fibers there and uh, just pull them off the clump. I like to measure them, just kind of eyeball them so that they're about the same length as the hook shank once I put them in place. Put them right there pinch them on top and then I like to hold on to them so they don't try to roll around the hook shank as I work my way back to the bend. I like to just put one wrap of thread under there just to kind of prop them up and splay them out a little bit and I will just bring my thread back to the back here and I'm just going to fill in the back half of this hook with some dubbing for the back half of the body. This is just some uh, super fine dry fly dubbing here. Just gonna take enough, just enough to fill in the back half of the hook. Start at the back here. Work my way forward, just filling up the back half. Try to make it nice and smoothly tapered as we get to the midpoint which is right there okay now that I'm at the midpoint I'm gonna put the wing on first and um, actually I'm gonna put the hackle on first forgot my steps there for a second this is some uh, some of the same ginger dyed grizzly uh, Keo hackle that I used in my Elk Care Caddis video, which is the last video I did. Just trim that off on the butt end. I'm going to stand those fibers out at a 90 degree angle and trim them up about a quarter of an inch or so, an eighth of an inch. Now I want it, the feather to be curved towards the front of the hook when I tie this on. So I'm going to just put that right over the hook shank at the midpoint and just tie that in with my thread and I'm just going to leave my thread hang at the half at the one quarter point so halfway between the midpoint and the eye of the hook just leave my thread hang right there for the wing on this fly I'm going to take a piece of Antron yarn and this is just a regular old Antron this is cream colored I'm going to take this section of Antron and I'm going to loop it underneath the hook shank right in. Okay. Uh, sorry I had a little technical difficulty there, but now we're back at it. So I'm going to take my, uh, get my hook straightened out there. Okay. I've got a single strand of Antron yarn here I'm going to use for my wing. I've got my thread at the one quarter point. I'm going to loop this up and under the hook 
and uh, just hold it straight up right there at that one quarter point. My thread is behind it right now. I'm just going to go from behind it to in front of it and do about three or four wraps. And then from in front, I'm going to go behind and stand it up nice and straight there. Do five or six wraps behind it. Now that should be standing up nice and tall. Now I'm going to just do one wrap right around that yarn on top of the hook shank. But I'm not going to go around the hook shank, I'm just going to go around the yarn. And that just kind of gathers it all up in one spot, makes it nice and, and uh, wing-like right there. So I'll move my thread back to the halfway point here, right where my hackle is tied in. And I'm going to fill in that front half of the hook shank with some dubbing. Just take some more. This is an amber colored um, super fine dubbing. And we only need enough to fill in the front half of the hook shank. So we don't need very much. Uh, we'll start to wrap that right in front of the hackle just to continue the body from the back half of the fly and I'm just gonna work my way up towards the wing once I get to the wing I'm just gonna go in front and I need just a smidge more dubbing here to fill in the rest of the fly so I'll just fill that in right in front and go around and behind the wing just to make sure that it stays nice and upright there so I got my wing at the one quarter point I got my hackle hanging off here at the halfway point and we'll pull this hackle forward I uh, will do the first wrap right at that halfway point go all the way around once and a half or so next wrap is uh, I want to leave some space in between there so I can see my body color be behind the wing looks like I'm gonna get about three wraps behind the wing once I get up to where the wing is I'll go underneath it and underneath the hook shank and do one in front of the wing and I'll do one have room for one more wrap here until I get up to the front where I, I will hold my hackle straight up angle it forward a little bit with my right hand or my thread over it with my left hand there right behind the eye go in with my scissors trim that off right there as close as I can get that a little closer I'm just going to pull all this back and cover up any hackle stems or things that I trimmed off there in the front with my thread make a nice little thread head go in with my whip finish right there turn my thread now I want to, I don't want to leave this wing uh, two inches long here so I'll uh, just kind of hold this whole clump of yarn straight up I want to cut it kind of angled from taller in the front to shorter in the back kind of like a real mayfly wing and I want it to be about the length of the body so right about there like that I can kind of fluff that out a little bit Make it look like a real mayfly wing now you could just leave it your fly like this. Well, I, the way I learned to tie this and the way I like to do it, I like to go in with my scissors straight from the front of the fly here. And I'll just go right along the bottom of the body and just trim out the hackles on the bottom of the fly. Just a notch out of there, out of the bottom. And I'll show you 
how that looks. You can kind of see that. You see that there? That uh, just gets the fly landing lower on the water surface. You can see that there? It'll help it to stand upright all the time, lands upright, should land upright all the time. And it just looks like a little mayfly sitting on the water surface, floating down the water. Um, <clears throat> this is a great mayfly imitation for any species you're trying to imitate. Uh, just vary the size of the hook and the colors of the body and the wing and the hackle or just to, to match whatever uh, mayfly you're trying to imitate. And I think you'll have good luck.